In this video, I will show you how to generate a consistent character across multiple shots using one single image input. I will show you how to generate different camera angles of the same scene, change specific parts of your image using simple prompts, tweak the color grade, and even control outfits and environments with multiple inputs. We're gonna be doing all of this inside one single Comfy UI workflow using Nano Banana and One 2.2. To get started, you need to install ComfyUI on your computer, go to ComfyUI.org, click on download and choose an option based on your system. Open the downloaded file and follow the installation steps, which are very straightforward. Once installed, ComfyUI will launch automatically. And here you need to load the custom Nano Banana and One 2.2 workflow that I built and you can download for free from the description box. Simply drag and drop the workflow file into the interface. When you do that, you will get this missing models message on the screen. That's because the workflow uses certain models that you most likely don't have on your computer. So go ahead and download all the files listed here. You can close the window for now and the models will continue downloading in the background. The workflow also requires some external custom nodes. So if you see this window, make sure you click on install all missing nodes. Once all the nodes are installed, you will need to restart ConfUI. But before you do that, click here to check on the model's progress. Wait for them to finish downloading and then click on restart. ConfUI will take a few seconds to relaunch. After that, you can start using the workflow. Now, this workflow contains two main groups. One that handles image generation using Nano Banana and a second group that uses One 2.2 to turn your generated image into video. By default, the video group nodes are bypassed. So let's focus on image generation first. I'm going to walk you through all the steps in details. But if you run into any issues during the process, I invite you to join our Discord server where you can drop your questions, seek help from other community members or simply share your work for feedback and inspiration. Inspiration. To get started with image generation, click here to upload a picture of your character. I'm gonna use this selfie I took of myself. I think it's a great example to show you guys how well this works even with amateur pictures taken from an odd angle and with basic lighting. Here you can set the dimensions of the generated image. I found that for landscape images, Nano Banana tends to default to 1344 by 768. So I'll just go with that. Other options you can go with are 1024 by 1024 if you want a square output or 768 by 1344 if you want a vertical image. Moving on to the right side of this group, you will find the Nano Banana Gemini node. This is where you can input a prompt and describe the scene you want to generate. For example, I want to generate a scene with myself in leather armor holding a torch. I included specific details about the clothing, scars, as well as a description of the environment. Make sure the model input is set to Gemini 2.5 flash image preview and you can leave the system prompt empty, but I like to use this for additional keywords that guide the overall aesthetic of the scene. I find this to be very useful whenever I wanna generate multiple shots and I'm constantly changing the main prompt, but I wanna keep all images consistent. Now, because Nano Banana is a closed model that runs on the cloud and not locally on your machine, we need to get a service API key that will give us access to the model every time we make an image generation request. To get your own API key, go to aistudio.google.com on the left side menu, open dashboard, then click on API keys, click on create API key and wait a few seconds for your key to be generated, click on copy. But before you can use the key, you must click on set up billing and follow the steps. Here you will need to confirm some account information and add a payment method. That's because Nano Banana, and I'm sure many of you are aware, is not a free open source model, so you will be charged for every generation. However, I honestly think that with the level of control and quality you get out of it, it's very affordable and worth the price. It costs less than $0.04 to generate one single image. If you want to keep an eye on how much you're spending, go to usage and billing. 
and click on the billing tab. While building this workflow, I ran so many tests and generated a total of 431 images, which in total cost me the equivalent of 14 US dollars. So you can definitely create tons of images while keeping the cost under control. Back to ConfUI, paste your API key right here and click on OK. And you can now generate your first image. To do that, click on Run. Nano Banana will take a few seconds to process your request. And wow, look at that. It's super realistic. It looks like I'm really in a movie. The character looks exactly like me with amazing lighting and composition, all from one selfie and a single prompt. Pretty cool. And it doesn't stop there. We're just scratching the surface here. There's a lot more you can do, but before we get into that, remember that if you don't like what you see, you can always click run again to get a new image. In the save image node, you can find the output path. Every image you generate will be saved in your ConfUI folder under output, Nano Banana. I docked my output folder on the left side of my screen to keep an eye on my generations while using the workflow. This will come in handy in later steps as you will see. Now let's explore what else you can achieve with Nano Banana inside this workflow before moving to the video section. If you look closely at the generation mode node, you will notice three different input options. We've been using the single image input so far, but if you change the index value to one, the generation mode switches to last image. This option automatically grabs the most recent image from the nano banana folder and uses it as input. With this mode, you can apply all kinds of edits to your last generated image. For example, let's say I don't like how the character is looking directly into the camera and I wanna change that without altering other parts of the image. In the prompt box, we can say, make him look away from the camera and click run. Just like that, we get the same image, but my character is now looking away from the camera. However, I think the head was turned a bit too much. I still wanna see more of my face. So you know what? I'm going to delete that last image and change the prompt to make him face forward, eyes looking slightly to the side, not looking at the camera and hit run. Perfect, this is exactly what I had in mind. And as you can see, being specific with your prompts really helps. Besides applying changes to the image, you can also remove certain objects. For example, let's ask Nano Banana to remove the runes from the background, hit run. Once again, the workflow will use the newest image in the folder as input and the runes are now gone. You can also add new elements to your image. For instance, we can say, give the man a long beard. I'm not gonna lie, I think I look cool with this beard. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments if you think I should grow a beard like this. At this point, I still wanna see how well the AI maintains my real facial features. So I'm going to delete the bearded version. Let's try changing the camera angle by simply saying, make this shot tighter. It did zoom in a bit, but not as much as I had in mind. So let's try something more literal, close up of the character's face. Oh no, that's not even close to what I wanted. I like this framing, but it's definitely not what I asked for. Instead, let's try extreme close-up of the character's face. Delete the wide shot. Okay, now I have no idea why this prompt worked, why the previous one didn't, but I'm glad it did. This is the exact camera angle I had in mind. Now, we can't talk about character consistency in AI filmmaking without discussing how to generate the same character in different environments while maintaining the same clothes and aesthetic. You can easily do this using the same workflow. Let's change the entire prompt to describe a new scene. I've also specified a different expression in this one. I actually like the last generated image and don't want to delete it since I might use it later. At the same time, I think the one before it could serve as a better reference for our new scene since it shows more of the clothing. The good thing is that you can simply change the start index here from 0 to 1, which will make the node select the second to last image instead. Let's go ahead and run this and look at that. It's incredible how the AI maintained the exact same outfit, kept my facial features intact and matched the same scars in precisely the same spots, all while placing the character in a completely different scene. Imagine how seamless your storytelling could be using this process. During testing, I also discovered that Nano Banana can be used to change the color grading of your scene. For example, we can type change color grading to Mad Max movie style. Let's set the start index back to zero to pull the last image. 
you will notice some minimal structure changes in your image, but it looks almost identical except for the Mad Max style color grading. You can try this with virtually any cinematic look you can imagine. I also tested the Revenant and it turned out remarkably close. Personally, I still prefer the original bluish tone, so let's delete the last two images. Now, if you think that level of control is impressive, wait until you see the third generation mode. But before we dive deeper, if you're finding this tutorial helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. This helps the algorithm recommend similar videos to you and supports me in creating more free tutorials. To use the multiple images mode, change the index to 2. This mode will load multiple images from a specific folder on your computer. I've set the path to mine here, but you can easily change it to any folder, inside which you can place any images you want to include in the generated scene. This gives you more control over elements like outfits, accessories and environments. For example, I added my picture and an image of a suit and an armchair inside an old abandoned building as the location. Now here's an important tip. Set the size of your location image to exactly match your desired output dimensions and name it zero. This will make Nano Banana use it as the first input image and prevent strange cropping issues in the output. And I'll show you an example of that in just a minute. Now you might be wondering if you can add more images to the input folder. The answer is yes, but I found that the sweet spot is two to three images. Anything more tends to distort the output. I even set the image load cap here to 3, so it will only load the first 3 images. However, I don't discourage you from trying more images since things might change after I post this video. Once again, I've set the output size to the horizontal resolution that Nano Banana defaults to. When writing a prompt for multiple images, be sure to mention every object or character included in your folder. This helps Nano Banana understand which elements to include and how they should interact. As you can see here, I mentioned man sitting in an armchair, wearing a suit. You don't need to describe what these elements look like, but you can also add objects that are not included in your folder, like the serval cat I added here. For the system prompt, I found that adding these keywords significantly improves output quality. So let's hit run and see what we get. In the output, we have the exact same armchair in the same environment with my character, aka me, wearing the exact same suit I included in the folder. Now isn't this incredible? It looks exactly like the original suit down to every little detail. Run it again and you will get the same elements just interacting in a different manner. Not only that, you can also generate scenes with multiple characters, though I've found that using a maximum of two people works best. As you can see here, I've successfully created a shot featuring me and Vin Diesel inside a sports car, an intense driving scene that looks straight out of a Fast and Furious movie. Pretty cool, right? When testing this shot, I had stubborn letterboxes appearing in every generation. The most effective solution was to include my own image of a car at the first input. This eliminates the letterbox issue 90% of the time. Now that we've learned how to maintain character consistency and generate scenes with a high level of control, we can use 1, 2.2 to bring these images to life and create a cohesive story. But before that, even if your image looks great as is, you can refine its quality even further before feeding it to 1.2.2. Initially, I wanted to add upscaling nodes inside the workflow to complete the entire process inside ConfiUI, but I wasn't satisfied with the results. I found myself returning to Topaz Photo AI. This video isn't sponsored by Topaz, but honestly, it has become a crucial part of my AI creation process, and you will see why in just a second. You will find a link to Topaz Photo AI in the description box, and since it's not a free software, I will also include some alternative upscaling tools. To upscale using Topaz Photo AI, simply drag and drop your image here, disable face recovery to avoid the skin looking too smooth, open the upscale settings and bring the denoise slider all the way down to preserve the natural film grain that Nano Banana generated. Set the upscaling ratio to 2. Looking at the side-by-side -side comparison, you can immediately see why I love this software. It completely eliminated pixelation from my image. The quality looks 10 times better without making the image look over sharpened or unnatural. And you can see significantly more details in the fur coat and fire torch. Just beautiful. 
click export to save the upscaled image. By default, it's set to save in the same folder as the original. Click save to complete the export. Back inside Comfy UI, go to the fast groups bypasser and click here to enable the video generation nodes. This group uses another load image node to import the newest image in your nano banana folder. In this case, the image we just upscaled, but you can also change the image path to a different folder if you want. I've set the video size to match the original image, but since we're using the upscaled version as input here, we can go even higher to preserve more detail. The challenge is that one 2.2 is a resource intensive video model so higher resolution requires more time and processing power if your computer can handle it feel free to increase the resolution if you want to learn much more about using one 2.2 in comfy ui and how to overcome hardware limitations check out my other video where i dive deeper into the one 2.2 workflows and settings in the prompt box briefly mention the subject and describe the overall environment but focus mainly on the mode and how the camera should move throughout the scene. That's really all there is to it. Now click run to start generating. Depending on your machine, this could take anywhere from a few minutes to a couple of hours. If the process is painfully slow, I recommend dropping the resolution. Try 840 by 480. Just make sure to maintain the same aspect ratio as the input image. While this comes at the cost of quality, you can use an upscaling tool afterward to increase the resolution of your video. Once it's generated, you will get to preview your video right inside this box. And just like that, our image has been brought to life. We now have a clip that could easily be used as part of a longer story. There is a slight odd movement in the beginning, but remember, one 2.2 is completely free. It doesn't cost anything except some time to rerun the process and get a new clip. This new one looks much more natural and incredibly realistic. I really like the natural movement of the flames and how the light flickers on the face. Also, the runes in the background remain consistent even when the torch passes in front of them, which is really impressive. You gotta love one 2.2. It's free, but so powerful. You can find the generated videos under the output folder, specifically in the video subfolder, all your generated clips will be stored there. Depending on the video size you chose, your video quality might appear somewhat low or pixelated. I typically use Topaz Video AI to upscale my AI videos and even increase the frame rate, which makes the footage look smoother and more natural. And you can see how much difference that makes in this comparison. I really hope you learned something new today. If you end up using this workflow in your creations, make sure to tag me on social media or share your project with us on Discord. Until then, stay creative and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.